There's a golden biscuit and a hot biscuit. Yes. This day cannot get any fucking better. <laughs> hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue Podcast, where we're suddenly very interested in that little baby. My name is Imposter Mary, also known as Melanie. And I am Imposter Sue Ellen, Sarah. And I am now on social media, Rocketman JR26, Josh. I switched it all today. There after we coming go. back after coming back from the final Elton John concert in America. So Mary couldn't join us tonight. She is down with the sickness. Poor thing picked up th- I, th- in Florida. I thought she was helping Donna follow up on a lead on her book. Sure. To go do some more f- research. <laughs> She, yes. Yeah, well, then she made a terrible excuse with the sickness, didn't she? Yes, she did. <laughs> true. True, true. true. Yeah. So tonight, we are talking about The Maelstrom. Ba-da-ba. Season 5, episode 20? So well, There must be some way to hurt him as much as he's hurt me. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed being with you last night. And we're still on for tonight. Bye, Cliff. I'm going to destroy you. You tried that. Didn't work. No, you don't understand. I don't want to just wipe you out. By the time I'm finished with you, there's not going to be any more Cliff Barnes. Episode 97 of the series. A quick note before. Um... Look for Audrey Landers, December 2nd, in Cloudy with a Chance of Christmas, where she plays Millie on Lifetime Movies. Charlene Tilton has a role in a um, small role in a Christmas movie. And the. uh, I saw that. What's the the Patrick Duffy one has been on, too? uh, Christmas uh, Promise? And um, any of our German listeners, head over to the German Comic Con this coming weekend because Charlene. Linda and Patrick and maybe Linda Pearl. So Larry, uh, not Larry, Charlene, Patrick, Linda and Linda no, um, will be over there uh, meeting and greeting with fans. Charlene asked me to plug that for us. So cool. I'll post all of this on our social medias later. What day is that? Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the third, the fourth and the fifth. And Charlene Tilton turns 64 tomorrow. No way. She does not look it at all. December 1st. And Morgan Brittany turns 71 on December 5th, which is also the same birthday as Walt Disney. Different year, I can't, obviously. I can't believe she's going to be 71 either. That's nuts. And, and she looks like the evil queen <laughs> <laughs> when she did that. Uh, so tonight, yes, we are talking about the, uh, the Maelstrom, written by Will Lauren. Directed by our own Patrick Duffy, the Duff. Uh, Original air date, February 26, 1982. And this episode was number one in the weekly rating. And J.R. plots. When does he not? When does he not plot? He's always plotting something against somebody, somewhere. So we open at South Fork. Front and center is the baby. And everybody's cooing over him because Bobby won conservatorship, didn't he? And it was a rainy night as JR pulled in. Mm-hmm. Rainy night. Well, I love a rainy night. I love to hear. <laughs> JR, JR comes in and uh, he's not really interested. He just goes upstairs. He tries to look happy about it, though. He was like, eh. Didn't really say anything, kind of smiled, walked away. And Lucy's like, well, it's his problem. And who was it? Miss Ellie said, you know, well, it's really hard for him without John Ross here. Yeah. She, she, yeah. Well, she's defending her son. It's like, okay, <laughs> come on, Lucy. I mean, you don't you don't think about this too much, I'm sure. But J.R. kind of does miss his kid. I mean. Yeah. I mean, you know, he had something going with Sue Ellen. And then all of a sudden. A complete 180, and she throws the pearls at him. She runs upstairs. She locks the door. She kicks him out of the house. And it's, what the hell? So his plan to get them back on the ranch is taking a sudden detour. Mm. 
So he goes upstairs and he calls his detective and tells him to be in the office first thing in the morning. Clear your schedule, dude. I don't care what you've got going on. Because he's so important. Mm -hmm. He's going to call in the army if you don't. Because JR owns the United States Army. It's the army of Ewing. Mm -hmm. It's the United Ewing Army. Meanwhile, Clayton has flown in to see Sue Ellen. He's come from the Southern Cross. And she tells him about how she has been reminded of just how nasty JR is. And and Dad is not surprised, is he? I'm, no, ca- I'm calling he, him Dad now. Dad is not surprised. Pa- Papa, Clay- Papa Clayton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pa- Papa Farlow. Papa Farlow, please come. come. Sue Ellen needs you there. But she, she stopped short of saying what it was that brought it all back at this point in time. And I don't understand why, like, she was like, I, something happened to remind me that they were lovers. And then she's like, but I can't tell you what that is. And I was like, so open, you've come this far. Why, why are you holding back? Open the, you've opened the bag. Now let the cat out into the room so the cat can do its business. Oh. <laughs> but she vows to find something that will hurt JR and, and make him hurt. Oh, Sue, Sue Ellen, how, how many times does she go off and go, I'm going to get back at him. I'm going to make, I'm going to make him hurt. Well, I'll get back at every, you, JR. And then she's the like, oh my God. I do. It's so, then he's like, oh, so beautiful. He's such a wonderful man. He's such a good father. It, this is, this is like table tennis. Uh-huh. And Sue Ellen is the ping pong ball going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And well, she even says it. She's like, just when I think everything's going so good, you know, and then I get a reminder of how shitty right. he actually is. Right. Whoops. Right. Once a J.R. Ewing, always a J.R. Ewing, as <laughs> she will later say. Right. He is. He's never going to change. And, but that's what makes him such a good villain slash Correct. lover. <laughs> a villain slash lover. lover. Slash lover. La, 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 lover. <clears throat> Danger noodle. No. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> yes. So the next morning at the office, JR is talking to his detective. Is it, uh, what's his name, Macklin? Or? Mm. Well, what really got me yeah. was what was my, you know, who visited my wife? I'm like, e- ex wife, your ex wife. Yeah. He's but still, he calls her his wife like all the time. He's, I don't think he ever refers to her as like ex. I don't either. Not intentionally. No. No, he he never does. It's 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 like she's a piece of it. She's basically a piece of property. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she may have moved out, but he hasn't moved on. And that's and this is where I think that, it's it's obvious that yeah, Jr. is an inherent narcissist, and he can't stand like not being in control. But at the same time, like he would not chase down any other woman like that. I don't think so either. I think that's his first. Well, you know what I mean. Is it, that's the woman he actually married. Like he mm-hmm. finally settled down, and then that's. I think it's his first like true love or whatever. Yeah, because if, if all you want to call it that, if all the shit he spit to her when they were fighting about, you know, I'll toss you out on the street before I give you a dime. You're just another possession, easily disposed of. Cool. Okay. Then you paid her your settlement. You're paying your child support. You get vis- visitation on the kid. Like, then let her go. Yeah. Dumbass. If all that was true and you just weren't like spitting nails at her. It's like this. she is a piece of property to him. Mm-hmm. He's always going to somehow own her. God. Uh-huh. Right. And then, then when he's bored with her, he's going to, you know, toss her aside and go find something else. Mm-hmm. And then when he doesn't have her, then he's going to want her back. It's the same circle of crap. Well, you know, basically. He wants his cake and eat it too. Like he wants her to be there no matter what. Like he expects yeah. that. Right. No Even after a divorce. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't acknowledge the divorce. No, no, I, I didn't approve of this divorce. So oh. we're not divorced. She's still my wife. Okay. <laughs> like it's his choice. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I, the, I, don't, I don't accept the, the result, the results of this. So uh, it's invalid. Right. <laughs> the idiot. So, so, sounds like uh, something else. <laughs> sounds that we familiar. Get into. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't accept it, so um, it's not real. <laughs> right. So, but Jr. learns that Bobby had been at the house just Swellens just before him, and was there for about an hour. He was there at like five thirty the day before. So now 
J.R. tells Sly to have Bobby come into his office as soon as he gets in. Oh, Bobby, they, you're they, in trouble now. Bobby, Bobby, set, tell Bobby to go Bobby to the principal's there. office. Tell, tell him to go to the principal's office. Is he, he in trouble, as Tootie would say on Facts of Life. And then in trouble. we cut to <laughs> South Fork, where Miss Ellie no, is. No? Actually, we... We, a very quick scene where Bobby stops at a newsstand to check the legal oh, papers. The newsstand, yes. Could be a filler scene, technically, but I guess not, because the newspaper comes into play later. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I thought he was going to go there and buy up every copy of... <laughs> just to get he rid may, of them. He may have. But, that, may but have. Then, then that would mean he would have to ride around the whole city and just get every copy and destroy them. And that would be a waste of time. Well, that's also like doing his due diligence legally, though, because, you know, they can't nobody can come after and claim, try to claim Christopher later on and be like, well, you never put anything in the paper like you didn't try. It's like, no, right. he, they definitely did. <laughs> that is paper. Both there and in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. which, again, mm-hmm. comes into play. Yes. <clears throat> so Miss Ellie is riding her bike, her stationary bike. How many which times has she been around just- the world this time? I love when she does that. I'm sorry. It's so funny to me. They just position it in different places to get different camera shots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, let's, let's put it with the driveway behind this time because we're actually filming on location. Okay, let's put it with the porch behind. All right. I like uh, when they put it by the pool. So Ray actually has his damn nice personality back. He's and all cleaned up. He's cleaned up. He looks good. She tells him he looks good. He just wants to know if she needs anything when he goes in town. Nice guy Ray is back. Nice guy trademark Ray. Like <laughs> That's because his wife went in there and beat the shit out of the whatever beat the shit is. out of Bonnie. Bonnie. Yeah. Bonnie. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a half breed. I'm so sad that I missed that episode uh. with y'all. It's like my favorite episode. I think we paid homage to you. We were like, Sarah loves this. this I mean, I like love she's a pop star caller, and she's like, well, now that we know what you are, let's get. <laughs> Why don't we get your thoughts on that just very quickly right, right this moment so you can have a chance to vent on it? I, I just think that she's a badass. From the minute she puts that, she's looking at him passed out in the bed, and she opens that closet door and gets that fur coat out and puts it on. Pops that collar and heads out the door. You know where she's going. You know. And then when she gets there, and she's just fucking badass. Donna, that is what made me love her. That episode on this mm-hmm. show is what made me love her. And that is what made me give her a psycho hug when I met her at the 30-year reunion. <laughs> like, gave her a hug where she might have called the cops like I was a crypt- cryptic fan. <laughs> but she was very sweet. Did, did you haggle over the fee? <laughs> I swear to God, I was going to start spitting out lines. I was like, that might be too much. <laughs> that might be too much. I would love to have her on the show, honestly. Mm. Well, don't forget, she's uh, she is tied to the NRA, so she could send some of those crazies after you if you. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not against the NRA. I just don't really care about it. Anymore. <laughs> That's right. so sad to say. I just don't. You know, everybody has their sweet spot. <laughs> but Ray ends the scene by saying he's really looking forward for Donna to come home, and he he, he misses her, and he's you know, being all sweet. And he better be. I think he realized he fucked up. Oh better, yeah. He oh reali- yeah. He, he realized he, he, he could have lost. Up. He he could have lost everything. Like she, he's the best thing he ever had. He's lucky. Like my. I would have been gone. Like, yeah. I, I would have been like, fuck, fuck you when you get home. All your shit's going to be packed mm-hmm. and in the driveway. This is my house now, motherfucker. I don't care if you built it not, with your own n- two Not kids. even packed. Just strewn about the front lawn. So he has to pick it up himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not packed. Yeah. Scratch that. Just thrown up. Maybe some fire on it, too. JR demands to know why Bo- what lies Bobby is filling Sue Ellen's head with and why he's going over there and... And I thought that's hilarious because Jr. doesn't well, – Bobby doesn't need to feed Sue Ellen lies about anything. Mm-mm. No, anything. he just needs to tell her the truth. No, exactly. <laughs> but I, was at, I think that Jr. knows that she, like, values his opinion on mm-hmm. things. And so anything he says, she's going to take it for 100% that it's right. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. But. Mm. Exactly. No, absolutely. She trusts Bobby. Mm-hmm. So he's put two and two together, and he's like, "Oh, geez, he he told her something that you know." And he 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 thinks it's lies, which is hilarious. 
I'm like, no, all he did was like spit truth, but you don't need to know that. Just, and that's just what Bobby says. It's none of your damn business. The only lies coming out out are from JR's mouth. Yeah. Well, and JR, like he tries to, you know, make a sick joke, you know, like, what are you doing over there anyway? And Bobby's like, get your mind out of the gutter. And PS, as I, as I stomp out this door, uh, it's none of your your damn damn business. business. It's not your damn business. 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 And that's JR's uh, just, it just pisses them off even more. So JR's going to JR. Right. JR's going to JR. JR's going to JR. When JR doesn't, JR doesn't have some control over something, he gets very, very angry and pouty. Did you just ding your bell? I don't have a bell. No. I thought I heard a bell. Oh, that oh, was your glass. That was my glass. <laughs> well, I was like, I left my honker upstairs, ding. but. No, it's not my bell. I don't have the bell. So that that sculpture, Jr. That phallic pornographic sculpture that Jr. got Sue Ellen was not long for this world because she takes it and hurls it across the room at the fireplace, and it shatters into a gazillion pieces all over the floor. That Mrs. Chambers is probably going to have to clean up Only when she gets into work. Staring at it very intently. Yes. For quite a <laughs> while, it's like. She didn't know that she really wanted to do that. And, to, and then she was just like, fuck it. <laughs> Goodbye. I like to break things. Yes. Break shit. So she goes. Break them up. So then she goes and makes a phone call. Who's she talking to? Cliff. It's got to be Cliff. And then we cut but to we the next scene. But we don't know. Well, he, he shows we up don't. fairly quickly, doesn't he? This person in the next scene. The mystery person. Um, mm. No, because we go to... Um, a Bobby's on the way out of the office and he calls Mrs. Chambers to tell Sue Ellen to meet him the next morning for breakfast at the oh, Golden Biscuit. The Golden Biscuit. The Golden Biscuit? Not the Hot Biscuit, but the Golden Biscuit. There's a Golden Biscuit and a Hot Biscuit? Yes. This day cannot get any fucking better. <laughs> that is made. I swear to you, I was in Houston and there was a something, there was some like, like, piece of shit hole in the wall thing and it was something and as we passed by got 100 miles an hour in the apron that almost killed me three times i saw a biscuit and i swear so i was like oh my god it was a hot biscuit and everybody started laughing then i had to explain it so today i was thinking <laughs> i wonder if there's another hot biscuit somewhere now that i know there's a hot biscuit I ate a golden biscuit. <laughs> oh my god that made my day <laughs> oh my god that's so sad I've, that that made my day i forgot about that and then that little scene and then it just goes to show you like what all the, all the bullshit you had to go through back before like cell phones when you had to call and, and physic, like leave somebody a message. And yes, like, it's almost like signals. Like, Oh, if I don't hear from her, I'll assume it's okay. And she'll meet me there. Like what if that, she doesn't yeah. get the message, dude? <laughs> what if she doesn't leave it on her voice, leave it on her beep. Answer machine. Just hope the tape doesn't go. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of tape. Whoops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that is a bonus question I think we should post up for uh, subscribers is how different would things be in this series if they had had cell phones back then? How, how much of the series would have changed? Well, Bobby probably wouldn't have gone back to the office whenever he thought his wife was going to jump off the building. Um, We've already seen car phones a couple of times. Yeah, I'm thinking I don't like, think there would have been like smartphones. I don't think there would have been yeah, they wouldn't have been as many um, like headline newspaper things either. Because I feel like they Social would have been media. like, "Hey, call and yeah, call and be like, hey, guess what happened? Hey, Miss Ellie, did it? You know, I, I don't know. No, like center of the house phone calls, like, oh, hey, phone for you. Pull the cord into the closet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I wonder if there are like if the camera pans down, if there are like crisscrossing phone cords all over South Fork, just. I'm sure they, they are. They have to oh, yeah. step over them to get around. Oh, yeah. That's why Miss Ellie rides a stationary bike, because she would get tangled up in the cords if she... Every time I see her run, I just think of... Think on the Wizard of Oz. Margaret Hamilton? Yes. And Folger's coffee. Oh, my God. So Sue Ellen goes... It was Arrives at the... Yes, at the... They, they, they drag, yes. it, they drag yes, it out it a little bit too. A hand making a drink. We don't see the person. The door opens. Swellen is there, says something. And then they pan over to Cliff and then they kiss. 
<laughs> That's my sound effect. <laughs> so I need to know what that is. Is that like a wiggling tongue or is it like the – Yes, boing, that's boing. a – Give me a tongue, Cliff. <laughs> Cliff for governor. Or is that a wiggling danger noodle? Both. It's both. Ooh. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> it's, it's a macho man, Randy Savage. Snap into a slim gym. <laughs> I said it all weekend. I'm sorry. I said it all weekend. I can't get out of my head. Now that gives a whole new meaning to Slim Jim, doesn't it? Exactly. Snap into a Slim Jim. Ooh, and, and then go snap into a Slim Jim. Cliff Slim Jim. <laughs> yes. Cliff for governor. <laughs> let's, let, 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 let's go to the Golden Biscuit where Bobby is wearing the leather jacket that he wore in the series premiere. When he's in, when he wore it to the discotheque too. The discotheque. But he obviously puts it into Ellen's head that Jr. knew that they had talked, so obviously he is having her house watched. Mm-hmm. I mean, her house may be bugged too at this point. For all she knows, she has no idea. And I love, I love how he is like, "Do you want me to? Do you want me to kick his ass? Like, do you want me to do anything?" And she's like, "I, I love her answer." She's like, "Let me think about that one for a minute." Like, <laughs> I, I love that. Like, it, it's. I don't know what it was Maybe. about the, the deliverance of that line, but it was. I liked it better than the one she followed up with about just wanting to have that pleasure for herself. Like the way she yeah. said that is just great. Let me think about that for a minute. Nothing like a woman's scorn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is true. Now Donna finds some disturbing information in Austin at the library. And she asks, uh, a bunch of HIPAA the- violating questions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Which the, I know that wasn't a thing back then, but and the woman at the record hungry, office hungry, is hippa, like, hungry, 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 hippa. She's like, oh yeah, just go to the, just go to the psychiatric hospital and ask them. I'm like, oh okay, sure. We'll just whip right in there. Yeah. Well, I'll just go. I'll Give just, me all your files, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna so walk in, gonna, and walk in, and take all these files. Yeah, absolutely. So she's heading to Big Springs. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's something to do with a person committed to a mental institution. Uh -uh. Wonder who that is. Hmm. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. Mm -hmm. Does this mean she's not going to go right home to see Ray? Hmm. Uh, She's putting her P.I. hat on. And speaking of being pissed, Sue Ellen comes home, opens (laughs) up her condo, and who's sitting on the couch? Womp womp. They are? Oh, yeah. Junior. Junior. You know, that's creepy as fuck, first of all. I know the maid let him in, but you know he could have gotten in, like, no matter what, even if he, even if the maid wasn't there. I think the bug. Of course he could have. I think the bug was in that sculpture. Probably. When he bugged. But I really love, uh, Sue Ellen stood up for herself. She was like, this is my house. We are divorced. What I do is my business, right? And he's like, yeah. Oh uh-huh. yeah, and she's like, "Then what the fuck?" Basically. Then what did Bobby say to you? Well, no, I was just reminded: once a J.R. Ewing, always a J.R. Ewing. And get your detective out of here too. <laughs> she's like, in I fact, know, I know it all, bitch. I know it fact, all. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a little phone call just for you and your detective. And she calls somebody and says, "Oh, last night was wonderful. Are we still on for tonight?" Goodbye, Cliff. We'll see you soon. <laughs> JR's gonna... like, mm, yep. JR, pout, JR pouts his way out of that condo. Because he hates to lose. And that's, so that's right. just it. Sue Ellen knew it would get under his skin. She knew it. Exactly. The that's one person, it. the one person that could get under JR's skin, mm-hmm. that barnacle, Cliff Barnes. The barnacle. Barnes the barnacle. Cliff the barnacle Barnes. Yep. Now, this is a very sweet scene, even though it takes place over the telephone. When Donna calls Ray. It is. To say that she has to follow up on a lead and she's, you know, going. And he, he asks if there's anything that he can do and that they'll talk when they get home. And then. What does he end by telling her? Something he hasn't said in a long time? I love you. And she says she needed to hear that. Oh. 
And you know, I'm like, I, needed, I needed to hear that, Ray. That's I needed to hear that. So Why? Sweet. Very Why? heartwarming. Hard eyes. However, you still cheated. Yeah, you still had to fuck somebody to say you I love you. You still had your dick in somebody else. You, Melanie, it's danger noodle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you had your danger noodle elsewhere. Slapping I somebody else around. <laughs> he was. God, yeah. I'm dirty tonight. Hey. He was he was sticking his branding iron in someone else's pasture. Oh Jesus! I just oh. got chill bumps. Yeah. But then the next scene, Ray ends things with Bonnie. Well, permanently. you know, and this is the crazy thing. He should have already done that. He should have. He never should have been there. Mm-mm. Yeah. And I find it interesting that he can't even put depression and grief into words he's like i don't know what i was feeling but i'm like all of the things and that's okay everything and, but, and then throw drunk and horny on top of it yeah so and then, dumbass gr- 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 grieving grieving makes you horny no mm-hmm. i'm saying he had all that but you can't blame being drunk and horny on being depressed that's a cop out i'm sorry i had here. to fuck somebody else my dad died yeah, that, that is a cop. Who says bullshit. that? You see what I'm saying? Okay. It's sympathy sex. Drinking it's leads pissed. to poor decisions, but it's not an excuse. But, no. Yeah. Now, Bonnie surprised me because she was like, well, I'm not her biggest fan for obvious reasons because she kicked my ass. But if this is the real <laughs> thing, Ray, then. Because we have to remember that uh, Donna fed Bonnie a knuckle sandwich. She did. To go with her mm. beer. So she gave her that good old fashioned right ass motherfucking hook. I was like, although, you know, Bonnie, what you did was skanky and not cool. Um, I'm kind of glad that Bonnie was like, you know, go get your woman. It's fine. You're a good man. Like, whatever. It may seem, well, I get what you're saying, but it's not that she's kind of giving him permission, though. Like, fuck off. That's his wife. He's trying to let you down easy. Back the fuck off. I don't need I'm your, sorry. Adam, I just it's I don't like, need I your like, permission, bitch. I get what you're I get what you're saying, yeah. but I just Yeah, can't. no. I mean, it was I don't like that she sounded like she was giving her, you know, him permission either, but yeah. at the same time she could have been she could have been fucking crazy about it. And she could have been like, you know, well, okay, you just use me. And she's like, well, you know, shit happened. Go get your woman. <laughs> You're like, mm, sorry. Next, we have Jr. late at night barging into Cliff's office to warn him that he's not just going to wipe him out. Cliff Barnes is going to cease to exist when he's done with him. You know, again, with the telling of the plans, Sue Ellen does this. <laughs> you know <laughs> the telling of the plan. Jr's like, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna fucking destroy you. I'm gonna wipe the floor with you and blow. And Cliff's like, Yeah, all right. You try. You tried mm-hmm. it before. It didn't work. Okay. And Jr's like, No, no, no. You're 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 with my woman now. Like, fuck you, man. Fuck you and the horse that you rode in on. And I'm you're pissed with my wife. Life. With my wife, even though we're divorced. Yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, Sue Ellen's off limits, dumbass. And Cliff's like, mm, she's a free woman. Sorry about it. Well, he doesn't even mention Sue Ellen, does he? No. He's she never comes up in the He's conversation like, that scene. destroy you. And Cliff's like, uh, okay. And like, you know, the whole time it's about Sue Ellen. But Cliff is like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. okay, JR. Yeah, yeah. You're going to take me out. Mm, okay, get out of my cause office. Because there, there was the mirror scene. When Cliff came into JR's office in a previous episode to say that he saw right through that whole Wally Hampton thing and that he's going to have Swell and he's going to marry her. <laughs> Cliff, you're telling your plan. <laughs> and JR, yeah. JR does it again. He's like, I, you know what? I've had time to think about it and I'm going to kick your ass. Like, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to kill you. And Cliff's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure, buddy. Like, okay. <laughs> Dancing on their grave, yeah. Mm-hmm. Next, we have we have to drink because Ellie is silently emoting over a picture of Jock. Oh, that's bedroom. sad to me. In the bedroom, drink. which we haven't seen in a while. Um, I think this is her remodeled bedroom too, or may- maybe not. I don't know. But um, obviously, her uh, that's the first sign of a crack. The cracks in, her. in the facade. Facade, yeah. yeah. And then Bobby comes to tell him, tell her that he and Pam are leaving for work. Like, gotta check in with Mama. Mama, we're going to school now. Our ah. ride is here. 
That so, whole family. So they come down and Ellie offers to babysit Christopher. And then Ray shows up to see if Bobby wants to go help do some branding on the ranch and do some ranch work. And Bobby's like, hell yeah. It's been a while since I worked the ranch. Let's, 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 let's do it. I'm going to change in two minutes. Does it take a minute to get up the stairs and a minute to get down the stairs? And then it's probably going to take like four minutes, maybe. Mm. Maybe five. Longer than, yeah. Now, I want to know how good these croissants are that, Cliff, uh, that Clayton brings over to Sue Ellen's house. They're fancy. They're in a nice white box. I hope he has extra because Sue Ellen has a guest. It's Cliff, <laughs> it's Cliff Barnes pouring orange juice. And no, Clayton doesn't want any orange juice. Then Cliff Cliff leaves, and Clayton advises Sue Ellen not to get in too deep for the wrong reasons. I mean, listen to Dad. Listen to Daddy. Listen to Dad. That's right. But she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. She just wants to go antiquing. Does anybody actually do antiquing? Mm. I, or is that an older people thing? No, I mean, it's... You gotta be antique Roadshow, I know. There's, there's Antique Roadshow, but... It was the only antique people that go antiquing. Mm, no. That's ages. No? Uh, I mean, well. Su- Sue Ellen is 34 years old in, in this, like, she, okay, Sue Ellen in in this episode right now is younger than me, and she is antiquing with Clayton. I don't think it's an age thing. I think it might be a class thing. Rich people. Rich people go antiquing. Oh. Yeah. Probably a rich people thing. Yes, exactly. I don't okay. have the money to go antiquing. <laughs> no, because ha- that stuff is expensive as hell. Mm-hmm. So JR's car pulls into a restaurant and parking lot. And Catherine, we actually see Catherine doing news work, doing a news story, interviewing people about their dining out habits amid the poor economy. And JR comes over and she uh, asks JR about his dining out habits and well well they haven't changed and neither have my eating in habits uh tries to make a joke and then she asks him about the economy and he says well it's gonna it's gonna bounce back and we're gonna be at the forefront and he he just makes that you know jr spiel but it's interesting because is this their first real like jr catherine scene together i know they saw each other at the barbecue but that wasn't that wasn't a big crowd of people so um they talk about Cliff's ambition and to making the comp- his company the biggest and being a powerhouse. And JR is intrigued and wants to see Catherine again. Mm. Mm. Uh, nah, do not advise. Abort, 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 abort. So then. Lucy? Lucy's at a photo shoot. She has asked to meet Mitch. Mitch comes to said photo shoot and is like, oh, she there's, is- there's all these people around. She- She's like, I'm she working. Is spra- she is sprawled all over the car wearing a white fur coat that looks like chicken feathers. Who? Lucy. Lucy. She's sprawled all over that convertible oh. like 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 a like like Tony Katane in uh in that in, um, white snake video. He has what ah, I yell that all that song. Here I go again on my own. And yes, Lucy- there we go. Lucy is on her own again because Blair is there and Roger is there. Roger's doing all the photo shooting. And Mitch asks her point blank, we need to make some decisions. And she said, well, I, I have five minutes between. This conversation is going to take more than five minutes, Lucy. Do you want to get back together? Do you want a divorce? I need to know. And Lucy is, is he impatient or is Evelyn impatient? Is, does Evelyn want want to make these decisions? And if Evelyn does, then she can just go. She can just sit and rot in hell and wait. And then she stomps off. But it's what she does next that stirs a reaction in Mitch. She goes over and she lay, locks lips with Roger and plays a little tonsil hockey in front of everybody. It just ugh. The guy That's is creepy. He has photos of her all over his wall. But he, but she also, even though she doesn't know the extent of it, you know, whatever, can't say a lot. But it, the fact is, is that every woman has a sixth sense and you know that fucker's creepy. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know he's creepy. Yes. So. We know he's creepy. She doesn't know it yet. She should. She will. I sure will. She I will. sure will. <laughs> cray, cray, motherfucker. 
Then we get that throwaway scene of Bobby and Ray out there branding horse cattle and blah, branding blah, blah. horse cattle. Horse cattle. <laughs> like cat dog. We, cat dog, yes. cat dog, cat or, dog, cat dog. I or, love that show. <laughs> or man bear pig. Man bear pig. Man bear pig. Anthony's doing his little. He goes, Mom, cat dog, cat dog, cat dog, cat dog. <laughs> cat dog. That, cat dog. That might, if they want to come up, if they, if they really want to make a make bank on their cattle ranching they would come up with a horse cow a new breed horse cow horse cow horse cow oh. house cross, cow. Moo. they could have <laughs> Ter- Therese and Raul in there that needs to be the opener <laughs> horse cow horse cow horse cow house cow, house cow I can't say that fast horse cow Horse cow, horse cow, horse cow, horse cow. It sounds like mm. Moscow. Horse cow, Moscow. 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 As a quick aside, <laughs> do we see Christine McVie from Fleetwood Mac died today? Yes, I did. Yes. I didn't know she was 79. That was older than I thought she I was. I didn't either. So then we find out Clayton bought Sue Ellen some antiques. I think, I think he's, I think he's, um, wait, he bought himself for her, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think he would like that. Cause I think his feelings are, um, <laughs> a little more. Yeah, yeah, a little more of this. Gling, 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 gling. She's like, Oh, the father I never had. And he's like, mm, daddy wants to take you home. <laughs> Daddy wants to drive you home without a car and jumpstart the danger daddy noodle. I right here, little girl. <laughs> Go out. Can I daddy just say, wants to jump. I fucking hate like calling any man daddy. Oh. Like I will not. I refuse. I won't do it. I think it's gross too. It's disgusting. <laughs> because we're, I, we're not gonna get into that right now. But no, because <laughs> because I called my my father daddy when I was a little girl, all the way up to like. Exactly. I still, to the day my dad died, I called him daddy. Yeah. I called him dad or daddy yeah. all the time. No, like, is it because we, I was going to say it's because we don't have daddy issues. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to get into a debate with anybody about this. I really don't. I mean, I kind of do have daddy issues, I guess, <laughs> but I still love my dad. You know what I mean? Like, no, I mean, no. So do I. Like me, me and, me and Tim Joy are like, we have, we have issues. Are we boring you, Josh? No, no, I'm, 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 i that's what he really wants. <laughs> I'm sure wants Jesus. Shock, this will all end up on the rope. cutting room floor, quote unquote. That's okay. I'm good with that. I like hey, it. No I'm, cutting room floor. Well, our outtakes so we, on Patreon. So we, we go we go from Clayton trying to jumpstart his note rope to Pam's aerobics class, which would be a great place for him to burn off some energy. Mm, I'm getting kind of tired of that aerobics class. Aerobics wear. Well, it is the principal diet and the principal workout and the and the James oh, yeah. and I forgot about all that. that stuff. But the class ends, and who's at the desk? Jeff Faraday asked Ooh. Pam to have Bobby call him the next morning at 10 a.m. At, at said number on the slip of paper. Ooh. Okay, now... I can see Bobby's walls of his house of cards starting to wobble. Crumble, wobble. They are, uh, in fact, that night we cut to South Fork and they're talking about Ray's miraculous turnaround and how he's loving working on the ranch again and he's very happy and he's pulled his head basically out of his dark uh, rectum and rejoined (laughs) the world. (laughs) That was a little much. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, <laughs> and then Pam goes, "Oh, by the way, um, uh, who, who's Jeff Faraday? Because he he's trying to track you down. He told me to have you call him at this number, and he's like, oh, he's just a guy. It's just like Bobby. Tries, Bobby tries to pass it off, just brush it off. Oh, no, no, big that, deal. 
Yeah, and that's where he shit his pants a little when she said that name. Yeah. You could you could just see a little bit of a poop stain on the back of his pants at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go change my panties. Because <laughs> basically, he shard himself. JR drops the he drops the axe on his detective because it's pointless at this point. He needs to take a different approach. And then the next, uh, we have Jordan and Merrill Lee coming in. We notice Andy, Bradley, and Wade Luce are no longer floating around with the the four of them are no longer together. And they go over some land acquisition deal, which JR approves of. But then JR starts inquiring about this thing called the Wellington property to the east on that little map. And Merrill Lee says, oh, it's bad land. It's dry as a bone. And JR says, oh. It's it's it, it, it's funny how one parcel of land can be so oil rich, and the next one can just be as dry as bone. <laughs> oh, let's have a drink. And I noticed it. I don't know if you noticed this, but when Jr. said, "Oh, let's have a morning drink," Jordan is like rubbing his hands, like he's like he's salivating, waiting to take a drink. Like, uh, like, yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get that morning drink going, Jr. <laughs> oh. Because all they do is lubricate their livers in Texas. Mm. So Bobby is on the phone to Faraday. Why the hell did you bring my wife into this? Well, you know, we I'm trying to track you down, and we, we got things to talk about. The hell we do, Faraday. Hey, let's not forget we have a little secret here. I will call you with the time and a place to meet, and we're going to talk. What do you think he wants? Mm, money. Yeah, he's going to uh, – what's that word? Not bribe, not blackmail. Um, Bilk? No, what's the word? Extort. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Yes. Sorry. Jesus. Jesus. Sound like a preaching woman. Jesus. Jesus, help me. <laughs> what is wrong with me tonight? <laughs> Tripping the light fantastic here. Okay. Cliff decides he's going to toast him and Sue Ellen, and she's a little apprehensive about it because she – she thinks they're moving too fast and she's starting to feel crowded. Do you notice that? Mm-hmm. It's like, are you just like, are you are you using Cliff for your own sexual gratification and to get back at JR? That's what it sounds like. Then Cliff wonders if Sue Ellen has a thing for Clayton, who he ran into at the house the other day. And Sue Ellen has to reassure him that he's like the father that she doesn't have. Or never had. Yeah. And they have a completely different relationship. So then uh, Cliff says, oh, to the waitress, okay, I'll, we'll have whatever the lady is ordering. Okay, here we go. Major, major, major creep scene coming up here. Major, 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 major red flags. I would, if I were her, I would run out of that place and never go back. And I would call Blair Sullivan and say, get me somebody else. This guy is whack. And what happened? Roger says, Lucy, something bother you? And she goes, I'm upset, Roger. And he says, well, I think you should divorce divorce Mitch. And that we, we'd be perfect together. And Lucy's like, well, I don't really think of you that we We, we have a professional, more professional relationship. And he's like, well, well, wasn't it a little more professional that when you, more than professional when you were using me the other day to get back at your husband? Mm-hmm. And then he decides to show her the crazy stalker room. Oh, I thought he was going to say that his penis. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I missed this at part. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say. Off camera, off camera. Wasn't that just a little. So he, he showed her that. I totally missed this. He showed he, her the room. He took her to the room where all the pictures were up on the wall. And then said, I think about you all the time. When I wake up and all day long. You know I'm what? Working, when that I go is, to sleep. That is literally attractive to zero women. Ever that would that would freak what me the, the fuck out. I, w- I would not do what she does. What the fuck? I would run screaming from that room. That's like, what I said. She w- wouldn't. Wouldn't. I mean, you wrote were, this episode, right? A man. A man definitely wrote this episode. Wouldn't you go to Blair Sullivan and say, "Get me another photographer"? Mm-hmm. I would just run out first and get in my car and then decide what should I do. Uh, not because working with that, not working with that again. Mm-mm. No, I agree. Well, so our final scene, uh, Pam and Bobby and Ellie are all cooing over little Christopher and everything like that. And then, then the phone rings and 
it's it's Lowell Greer from California calling JR. And he's looking through some legal journals out in California. And there's the notice of Bobby trying to adopt. And he said, well, it, it's interesting that your brother's trying to adopt because a few months ago he called me looking for information about Kristen Shepard and her baby. Oh, God. People are so stupid. Mm-hmm. And Jay was like, "Really? Mm-hmm. Well, you have a detective out there. I want you to, I want you to have that detective do some digging here because suddenly I'm very interested in that child." Mm-hmm. And scene, and we have to drink because we end on Jr.'s face. That's my favorite scene. He looks, he looks over at Pam, Bobby, Ellie, and baby Christopher, and he's suddenly very interested in that child. Mm-hmm. I'm suddenly very interested in that little baby. And scene. And scene. So, how how are we rating and ranking in Hubba mm. Baloozy and? I gave it four point mm-hmm. two five bourbons and a murder wall because I'm sorry, that's what the pictures of Lucy is. It's a fucking crazy murder wall. <sighs> I gave it a three point. Seven. Oh, sorry, yawn. Sorry, neighbor. A three point seven five. This is a toss up. Shit. I'm just gonna say in a pussy ass ray. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got tonight. I went with a four two five because um, the wheels are starting to. The, uh, Bobby's house of cards are starting to fall. Yeah. In this one, and Jr. has put Cliff in his tar- in his sights, and that's gonna probably run through the end of the season. And I give it the shattered remains of that sculpture that J.R. gave Sue Ellen all over the floor. Mm-hmm. And that is the end of this week's installment. So we are going to come back next week with episode 98 of the series. I don't know what number this is of the season. The Prodigal. And Mary will be back from uh, Big Springs where she is helping Donna track down this uh, lead at the sanitarium and for all of our social media stuff you can go and get merchandise on and check the links go to Union barbecue go to um twitter instagram facebook and give us a five-star review i also want to give a shout out to our patreon members uh yes Mary gave me the list. Uh, Brendan Phillick, Captain America, Sheen Pye, Laura Bernheim, Brad Maholland, Anita Wren, and Kristen Carlano. Thank you, guys. You keep the lights on for Thank us. Thank you. And you keep Thank us in you. bourbon. Yes. Keep the, you keep that liver lubricated. <laughs> we, we are going to try to keep delivering content. I hope you're enjoying our outtakes. Uh, the holidays are a We're little crazy keep- for everybody. Hopefully January we get back into the swing of things. And, yeah. And we are working on some, at least I'm in contact with some potential guests to join us in uh, future episodes. And um, I might shoot a little spinoff here called After the Barbecue, where different cast members talk about current projects and nothing to do with Dallas. We have Duffy's Dough. We have the Mary Dangsters. We have we have Deborah Nard's singing career. We have a lot of things going on that are outside the Dallas realm. So it might be nice to have some guests on to talk about some of those things that uh, they might want to draw attention to in their current lives. So until next time, y'all come back now, you hear? Bye, y'all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm Imposter Mary, right? Bye. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Next on Dallas. Your father's dead, and I'm running this company. You disgusting little man. Let me tell you who did come to see me, though. Clayton Farlow? Clayton. So Ellen, the man's in love with you. I don't think Mother would let anybody destroy Daddy's first company. Not even Cliff. I think I can safely say that shortly, 
you'll have absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh, you ever, ever come near my wife again. 